when I was in graduate school, you know, I entered graduate school uh, back in 1978. And at that time, we had a very different view of the Maya. One of my key professors, uh, T. Patrick Colbert, was convinced that the Maya were essentially not warlike. They did not have a written historical tradition. And the failure of their society was predicated on uh, managerial mismanagement of the ecology and resources. Bear in mind, that's when everybody was talking ecology. Well, my dissertation actually posited a counterpoint to all of that, and we didn't get along as a result. Uh, everybody was fascinated. How could the Maya have sustained themselves with Sweden agriculture alone? Sweden is when you take and chop down a portion of the forest, wait till the trees dry, you set them on fire. The, the, the burning of the wood creates the mineral uh, substrate needed to grow maize. But you can only do that for about five years before you exhaust the soils again. So how did you maintain populations? At that time, uh, my professors and even some of their predecessors believed that sites like Tikal were vacant ceremonial centers in which, uh, you know, uh, the peasants from the surrounding regions would come long distances to worship uh, the, the priests and astronomers at these immaculate uh, palaces and temples. And so people began to realize, wait a minute, there's something suspicious about the model that's been put forward here. Uh, these had to have been great cities, uh, but there's no evidence. Uh, and so since that time, uh, new technologies have come to the fore. And one of the latest is uh, uh, basically LIDAR imaging. Um, it's, it's basically uh, the equivalent of taking a survey instrument, like an electronic distance measuring device, and adding a prism. With the use of the prism, uh, you aim the, uh, uh, the beam into the prism, and it sends points of light virtually everywhere, thereby uh, measuring in a split second an entire room block. Now what they've done, and this is what the, the real uh, revolution is, uh, the Northern Patan, the region within which uh, a friend of mine, Richard Hansen, he's an archeologist who's worked in the El Mirador Basin for about 35 years. Uh, he's the guy that worked with Mel Gibson on the movie Apocalypto. Uh, he knows his stuff. He's one of the preeminent Mayanists. And what they've found there are uh, the, the, uh, just incredible cities. Uh, these, they had highway systems, massive highway systems, aqueducts, uh, they had uh, uh, all kinds of hydraulic features, they had pyramids, towns, palaces, virtually everywhere. And he's finding those, he's been working there for this long period, but it's one of the most remote areas. Uh, you have to pack in uh, I asked uh, Richard about going in, and he said, well, it's about a, a three to six day uh, uh, pack mule uh, a train into the forest. Either that or you helicopter in and you know, so forth. Well, that area has been virtually impenetrable to uh, survey work. Well, with this new technology, LIDAR, mounted on helicopters and various other uh, aerial devices, They've been able to run vast swaths of the jungle and literally penetrate the forest canopy, such that in the latest findings from the Pakunam uh, LIDAR initiative, they've literally mapped fairly large areas. And in some of these near places like Tikal, Guatemala, they now have evidence of upwards of 60,000 sites and features that were largely unknown. So th this is really, truly revolutionary in every sense of the word. Uh, as a result, we are now having to revisit the extent to which Maya populations were focused solely on these great cities. And it would appear that there were many more cities, many more causeways, many more highway systems, many more of the things that would speak to very advanced society in areas that date as early as 400 BC at El Mirador. Uh, or into the site of Tikal all the way through to about the 8th century AD. Uh, so it, it really is uh, revolutionary, uh, and we are now having to rethink uh, the demography of the American Indian, and the Maya in particular, for that region. Uh, this would suggest that there were likely uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, inhabiting what today is one of the most uh, dense forest canopies in the Americas. Oh, there it is. This is his site, and he dedicated the book to me. He says, Ruben Mendoza, you are a hero. Thanks for all you do for anthropological truth. <laughs> so.